Before Christmas, my cousin, 18-year-old female, who I will call M for the sake of the story, was over for the holidays and we were all sitting in the living room talking with our grandmother. I don't remember the reason why, but M paid for a background check on her sister's 22-year-old female fiance. Just recently, E and her fiance got engaged after having a baby and the background report that M showed me and our grandmother showed that E's fiance, 34 or around that age, male, had brutally beaten a 13-month-old child when the fiance was 19 years old, landing the child in the hospital, fighting for their life. The fiance is now a felon and has served their time. It has been a few weeks since this information came out and I do not feel comfortable being around him or letting him around my child, and neither does my husband. I want to confide this information to E, but my grandmother had threatened her relationship with me if I had said something, and M is refusing to tell her because she is risking the relationship with E and newborn niece by telling her the information she found. I just want to know what exactly I should do because I would want someone to do the same for me, but I am risking losing my relationship with M and my own grandmother. E wants me to be a bridesmaid at her wedding, and I don't even want to go to a wedding seeing her marry someone who beat a child to the point of hospitalization. Most of the immediate family knows by now and doesn't want me to say anything either. At this point, I am ready to say forget it and cut everybody off because they want to protect and welcome a child aggressor into the family. Side note, from what we all know, E has told us that the reason her fiance is a felon and went to jail is because he told her that it was over drugs. Edit, first, I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your advice. I have been reading each and every one of the comments and wanted to let you all know some things important to the situation at hand. I fully plan on telling E in one way or another. I actually wrote out an entire message for her in my notes app and saved it for when the time comes. Also, I went and searched, and there are public records online about the child abuse case. As much as I want to tell her this instant, here is the big issue. My husband and I are currently waiting for our duty station, military-related, and my grandmother, who I was speaking about, is actually letting us stay in one of the extended rooms of her home until we get our station. If I were to tell E now, I am at risk for being put out and I do not feel comfortable at this very moment either because E's fiance knows where we stay and I do not want to risk the safety of my child. And I, I have to wait to tell E until we leave so that we won't be at risk for homelessness in the worst case scenario and are in a safe place. This will be within the next few months at the latest. This entire situation is very sticky and stressful and I want nothing more than to sit E down and one, ask her if she knew about this, and two, let her know I only want to find peace within myself, knowing that she knows and she has the right to make a decision for her and her baby. I know the longer it goes, the worse the outcome may be, and I am okay with being the bad guy in my family's story if it means I get this off of my chest, because as stated, if this were me, I would want to know. I will update the post periodically and when it is safe to have the conversation with her. Edit two, I considered the comments about keeping it anonymous to avoid fallout and retaliation and have since reached out to some of those who commented, asking to anonymously send the information to my cousin. I 100% need this off of my chest and need to let her know as soon as possible, no matter what. Thank you all for your input and feedback. It means the world to me to get this off of my chest, and I hope all goes well with the anonymous sender sending this information. I will keep you all updated if I hear anything from her. Edit three. It has been hours since an anonymous person online helped send the public information over to E with links to all of the articles about the child abuse case. Currently, there have been no phone calls made from E. Thank you to the person who helped out with this situation you will forever be in my gratitude. Anonymity was the best way to go to not only ensure my safety, as you all know, but also everything else involved as listed above with my prior updates. Considering no phone calls were made and nobody has reached out to me who does know, the suspicion that she already knew but is deciding to keep the information private is beginning to solidify. 
or she could be processing the information privately. My husband fully supports me in this and has said, if in the case she knew about this and after the incident when she tried to get our daughter in the car months ago and had a complete freak out to have an overnight visit, comments, which she never ended up going because I know my daughter and respect what she feels, it is the biggest backstab she has ever done and nothing will ever change. My biggest concern that is still in my heart is for the baby involved. I plan on waiting a few days, then officially having the conversation with my grandmother again, and I will be compiling some of your all's advice given when the time comes to have the conversation with her. If nothing has been said or done in a week, I will update you all. But I regret to inform you all, I do not believe anything will change with my family. I will be cutting off the people involved who do know they prioritize keeping a family together than the safety of this new baby. After all of the outside perspective, as this is my first time expressing familial concerns online for advice, it has made me realize how messed up everyone is in this situation. I cannot stay in a family who not only risk a baby's life, but would also risk my own by keeping this private. Thanks to all of your guys' input, I'll update with any new information. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you have to tell her. Her baby is at risk. Forget about your grandma. She can't have a relationship with a dead baby. I worked in a pediatric doctor's office and saw so many babies with problems from physical abuse, with brain damage being the most common. One baby was brought in brain dead because the father abused her severely. He had also ended the life of another one of his babies and served time for it, but the baby's mother had no idea. Please don't allow the abuse to continue. I don't know how you could live with yourself if you don't let her know. And if she chooses to stay with him, call Child Protective Services, CPS. Comment two, not the idiot, not the a-hole. But the underlying problem here is that E didn't investigate him herself. It amazes me that with all the easily accessible information these days, anyone gets married and is surprised to find out something terrible about their new spouse later on. E needs to know, of course, but she should have already been aware. You might also be shocked to find out that E does know and still plans to marry him. She wouldn't be the first foolish person to make such a stupid decision. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks again for sticking with me through this crazy situation. I've been reading all your messages and taking your advice to heart. Here's what's been going down since my last update. So, after the anonymous tip was sent to E, things have been tense, like you could cut the air with a knife kind of tense. E hasn't reached out to me, but I've noticed she's been posting less on social media, which is not like her at all. She's usually all about sharing every little detail of her life. It's like she's gone into some kind of lockdown mode. Now, let's rewind a bit to give you some context. E's fiance, let's call him D, has always been a smooth talker. He charmed his way into our family and everyone seemed to love him. But I remember this one time before the engagement when D lost his cool at a family BBQ because someone spilled a drink on his shirt. It was a glimpse of a side of him that he doesn't show often. That memory has been haunting me ever since we found out about his past. Back to the present. My husband and I have been walking on eggshells around my grandmother. She's been acting like nothing's wrong, but I can tell she's worried about the whole situation blowing up. She's always been the type to sweep things under the rug, hoping they'll just go away. But this, this is not something you can just ignore. Now here's the juicy part. M, the cousin who did the background check, has been acting super weird lately. She's been avoiding me, and I caught her whispering with my grandmother a couple of times. It's like they're plotting something and it's driving me nuts not knowing what it is. But wait, there's more. Remember how I mentioned Dee's charm? Well, it turns out he's been using it on more than just my family. I bumped into an old friend of E's who used to be close with her until Dee came into the picture. She told me that she's been cut off from E ever since she questioned Dee's intentions. It seems like anyone who doesn't fall for his act gets pushed out of E's life. Now, let's talk about the baby. My niece is the sweetest little thing, and it breaks my heart to think she could be in danger. I've been losing sleep over it. I've even had dreams where I'm trying to save her from D, 
but I can't get to her in time. It's been messing with my head, big time. Just a few days ago, I decided I couldn't take it anymore. I had to talk to my grandmother. I sat her down and laid it all out. I told her about my fears for the baby, about how I couldn't stand by and watch E marry a man capable of such violence. I expected her to get angry, but she just looked defeated. She didn't say much, just that she understood where I was coming from, but that we had to think about the family as a whole. That conversation left me feeling empty. It's like I'm living in a house full of strangers. My husband has been my rock through all of this, but even he's starting to feel the strain. We've been arguing more, mostly about when we can move out and start fresh. And then, yesterday, something happened that I still can't wrap my head around. I was in the kitchen when I overheard M on the phone. She was talking to someone about E and D, saying things like, she has to know the truth and we can't let her marry him. I was shocked. Was M having second thoughts about keeping quiet? Before I could confront her, she hung up and saw me. She tried to brush it off, saying it was nothing, but I could tell she was lying. There's definitely something she's not telling me. So here we are, a family on the brink of falling apart. Secrets and lies piling up like a house of cards ready to collapse. I'm at a loss, guys. I want to protect my niece. I want to support E, but I also need to think about my own family's safety. I confronted my coworker over her offensive sweatshirt, and she just smirked. But when her uncle stepped down, the new rules made her explode. I, 37-year-old female, white, it might help give context work for a company that has a booth at the Northwestern Stock Show. There's about 200 of them here. People from all walks of life come for the stock show, the rodeo, food, and of course the booths with all kinds of goods and services to purchase. I've been here all week. Last night, Sunday, day before MLK Day, a new worker came in for the booth just across from mine, a younger white girl wearing a Confederate sweatshirt. And it's not just a picture of the flag, the sweatshirt is the flag arms and all, very in your face. Looking at this all day made my blood boil, especially the fact that the owner of the booth owns over 20 booths here and saw her wearing it. Said nothing, so I thought. I eventually get off the clock. I walk up to her booth and with a very soft voice, because I have 100% lost my voice while being here this week, say, out of all the sweatshirts you own, you thought that one would be the best to wear for this event? She replies with, yes, it was. I go on to say, very softly, because again, the voice is lost. You do understand that wearing is showing everyone that you not only a discriminatory, but also ignorant as the Dickens. She goes on to say, it's not about racism, it's about history. You know that old chestnut. I told her, I hope you enjoy the upcoming April 9th. Maybe wear a white flag sweatshirt because that would be more historically accurate. Oh, you don't celebrate April 9th? That's the day the South surrendered. Maybe know that history before you open your mouth about history. She was very polite and asked me to go back to work. I told her I had clocked out and this is my work now, fighting the good fight. That was about the end of it. More fun happened today. I'll give an update if you all want. To make it short, I won the good fight in this instance. But am I the idiot for saying what I said? Updated, went to work today, MLK Day. Both of my bosses were there. I went to my booth where my first boss, 52-ish female, said we needed to have a talk. We walked away from our booth and she said she heard what happened from the owner, late 60s, mid 70s male of the other girl's booth. He called my boss last night after I left and asked what happened. She wasn't there, so she didn't know. My boss then asks me to apologize to the girl. I told her absolutely not. I did, however, apologize to my boss because I understand that my actions might have consequences to the company. If she needed to terminate me, I completely understand, and I hope we can still remain friends. You all know how work friends go. She said, you're not going anywhere. She also reminded me that she's a vegetarian, but I don't see her pouring paint all over the animal's furs. I reminded her that those, however sad, are just animals, not humans, and hate has no place on this earth. We had a good cry, hugged, and made some sales. My other boss, late 40s female, came and talked to me a few hours later. Mostly the same jam. I apologized to her, promised not to do it again, which I don't need to, 
I made my point. I've moved on. Lastly, I don't know if it really makes a difference, but my husband is black. My mother-in-law is an immigrant. So he's black and a first-generation American. Some folks assumed I didn't know any people of color. Funny thing is, I'm usually the only white person when we get the friends groups together. Just throwing it out there. No big deal. I would love to post a screenshot of our convo before this went down. The white flag of surrender was actually his idea. Final close. The NWSS chapter is the owner of the booths. The girl worked at told her she is not to wear that hoodie while representing his business ever again. So yeah, an exciting little uproar for you folks. For all you racists out there, you can 100% suck my hole. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Last night, Sunday, day before MLK Day, a new worker came in for the booth just across from mine. A younger white girl wearing a Confederate sweatshirt. Not the idiot. She knew what she was doing. She thought she was being smart or funny wearing it the day before MLK Day. Comment two, not the idiot. The Confederate flag is a hate symbol and everyone that says different is a jerk. Full stop. You know what has a ton of history, thousands of years worth? The swastika. Still wildly inappropriate to put it on a sweatshirt. Now for the update. So it's been a bit since the whole Confederate sweatshirt showdown at the Northwestern Stock Show. And let me tell you, things have taken some turns. First off, let's rewind a bit. Remember how I mentioned my husband is black and my mother-in-law is an immigrant? Well, turns out that's more relevant than I thought it would be. My husband has always been super supportive of me standing up for what's right. And he was the one who suggested the white flag of surrender quip. He's got a sharp wit, that one. Now back to the present. After the whole confrontation, things seemed to cool down. The girl, let's call her sweatshirt, was told not to wear that hoodie again. And I thought that was the end of it. But nope, life had other plans. A couple of weeks ago, I was working my booth when I noticed sweatshirt wasn't at her usual spot. Instead, there was this older guy, probably in his 50s, running things. I didn't think much of it until my first boss came over with a look on her face that said, we need to talk. Turns out, Sweatshirt's dad is the older guy now running the booth. And guess what? He's the brother of the owner of all those booths, including the one I work at. Family ties, right? But it gets better. Sweatshirt's dad had a bone to pick with me. He confronted me during my break, all red-faced and fuming, saying I had no right to talk to his daughter that way. I kept my cool, reminding him that hate symbols have no place in public, let alone a family event like the stock show. He wasn't having any of it and threatened to have me fired. I told him to do what he felt he needed to do, but I stood by my actions. Now, here's where it gets juicy. My second boss, the late 40s woman, she's actually been dating the owner of the booths on the down low. I only found out because I overheard them talking one evening after the show had closed for the day. They were arguing about the whole situation, and she was defending me, saying that the company can't be associated with that kind of negativity. The next day, my second boss pulled me aside and, in a hushed tone, thanked me for standing up for what's right. She admitted that she's been trying to push the owner to take a firmer stance on these issues, but it's been tough because, well, family. But wait, there's more. Remember how I lost my voice during that week? I went to the doctor, and it turns out I had a pretty bad case of laryngitis. The doctor ordered me to rest my voice, which meant no confrontations, no arguments, just silence. It was torture, but it gave me a lot of time to think. During one of those silent days, sweatshirt came over to my booth. I braced myself for another round, but she surprised me. She handed me a note that said she was sorry. She'd been doing some thinking and realized that her sweatshirt could be hurtful to others. She even mentioned that she'd started reading up on history, the real history, and was beginning to understand the impact of her actions. I was floored. I couldn't talk, but I gave her a thumbs up and a smile. It was a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. Now for the final kicker. Last week, the owner of the booths announced he was stepping down. Health reasons, he said. And guess who's taking over? My second boss, the woman who's been secretly dating him. She's already started making changes, including a new policy on appropriate attire for all employees. My sister stops helping me financially for a holiday, 
so I stand up for myself and things change when I land a tech project. She's in for a surprise. My 27-year-old female, Sister Rosie, 31-year-old female, is dating this guy, Joe. They've been dating for about five years now. About four years ago, Rosie decided to quit her job in tech to stay home and take care of his children. They do not have children together. During infection 19, Joe lost his job and had to get a much lower paying job. So he doesn't earn much now and they struggle financially. Rosie tried getting a tech job again, but she wasn't hired at any of the jobs she applied for. I suggested that she can look for other jobs, even part-time ones, but she thinks it's going to be a waste of her talents to work a random job when she has two university degrees. So although they've been struggling financially, she isn't looking for any job that isn't in tech. My problem with this entire thing is she keeps asking me for money to pay bills or make ends meet. It isn't a whole lot, probably 200 to 300 pounds a month, but it gets annoying sending her 200 to 300 pounds a month when that could go into savings. I've been doing this for most of 2023. Recently, I told her that I need to save for a holiday I'm taking with my friends this summer, so I can't afford to keep giving her money every month. I have other savings for more important things that I can't spend on a holiday, so I have to save for it from scratch. She asked if I'd actually rather see her struggle just so I can go on holiday. Honestly, this annoyed me. I told her she can get a job if she wanted to, but her pickiness is the reason she is broke. Her stepkids are at their mom's house half the time, so there's no reason she can't work on those days. It doesn't have to be a tech job, but literally anything will pay her more than I give her a month if she just tries. She said she sacrificed her life for her stepkids and now she's suffering financially. She can't get her old job back and none of us, referring to me and our other siblings who she used to ask for money before me, want to help her get back on her feet. I said we've all helped her for years. And frankly, it wasn't us who asked her to stay home and raise those kids. So I'm not sure why she's making it our problem. I told her I can send her 300 pounds one more time when I get paid, but I won't send anything again unless she's in dire need. She said a lot in anger that I'm not taking personally. She claims her main issue isn't even that I'm not sending her money anymore, but that I care more about taking a holiday than about her well-being. I just don't think it's fair to ask me to put my life on hold just to send her money every month when she is perfectly able to get a job. Am I the jerk? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. One of my siblings spoke rudely and continued to speak disrespectfully when I informed them that the last monthly payment will be the final one. They didn't receive the last month's payment because they thought it was acceptable to talk to me that way. As a result, I can choose to keep or donate that money elsewhere. Please note that I used the money to take my friends camping on a long weekend and I did not feel guilty about it. Comment two, your sister is entitled and lazy. She is taking advantage of the kindness of our family, allowing her to do nothing all day. Can you confirm if she is actively applying for jobs or if you have received any rejection letters? because I have a feeling that she is just sitting back and not making much effort. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a hectic couple of weeks since I last posted about my sister Rosie and her financial struggles with her boyfriend Joe. I've got some updates that I think you'll find pretty interesting. So after our last conversation, Rosie was pretty mad at me for not wanting to give her money anymore. She even went as far as to say that I was choosing a holiday over her well-being. But things took a turn when Joe's ex, the mother of his kids, found out about their situation. She's always been kind of nosy, and she overheard Rosie talking to a mutual friend about their money problems. The ex, let's call her Karen, decided to confront Joe about it. She was furious that Rosie was struggling while taking care of her kids half the time. Karen and Joe had a huge fight, and she threatened to take full custody if he didn't get his act together. It was a real mess, and Rosie was caught in the middle of it all. Now, Rosie has always been the type to avoid confrontation ever since we were kids. She'd rather keep the peace than stand up for herself, which is probably why she stayed with Joe through all this. But with Karen breathing down their necks, 
Rosie finally snapped. She told Joe that she was done being the only one trying to make ends meet and that he needed to step up. Joe was shocked. He'd always seen Rosie as the quiet type who wouldn't challenge him. But seeing her stand up to him like that, he realized he had to do something. So he started looking for a better job, and believe it or not, he found one. It's not as good as the one he lost during Infection 19, but it's a step up from where he was. Meanwhile, Rosie started looking for jobs outside of tech. She remembered how she used to volunteer at the local library during university and how much she loved it. So she applied for a part-time job there, and guess what? She got it. It's not a tech job, but she's happy because she's doing something she enjoys and bringing in some extra cash. But here's the real kicker. One day, Rosie was at the library organizing some books when she stumbled upon a tech meetup flyer. It was for a local group that helps people in the tech industry network and find jobs. Rosie decided to go, and it was like a light bulb went off. She met so many people who were impressed with her skills and background. And one of them happened to be looking for someone with her exact qualifications for a project. So Rosie started working on this project, and it's been going great. She's making more money than she ever did before, and she's back in the tech field, which is where she wanted to be all along. Plus, she's still working at the library part-time because she loves it so much. As for me, I've been saving up for my holiday, and Rosie hasn't asked me for money since. She's been too busy with her new job in the library, and Joe's been doing his part too. He's been more involved with the kids and making sure to contribute more financially. But the best part of all this? Rosie and I are getting along better than ever. She apologized for the things she said in anger, and I told her I was just worried about her. We've both been supporting each other, and it feels like we're finally on the same page. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day. Great.